So welcome, thank you for joining this uh, sort of informal session of where we are with the new report. And um, uh, there's a shared Google Doc where we're gonna be taking some group notes and uh, I have a, a very general outline um, at the top there. So we'll kind of try to hit all those things. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say uh, was just give you a little, um, uh, perspective on why we went uh, with this particular method um, in our transition to, uh, and our sustainability grant. Um, Arctos has strived to remove any proprietary dependencies, and that included expensive software like uh, moving from Oracle to Postgres. Um, and Similarly, our old reporter was based on cold on Adobe's Cold Fusion, which has actually been on the chopping block. I feel like for you know years, uh, they they they've always been very Adobe's always been very cagey about like how long Cold Fusion is going to be around. Um, but you know, it does require proprietary software that, frankly, we don't want to keep paying for something that may not um, last uh, for a very long time. So, so in that. Um, move, we, we looked around and uh, considered a lot of different kinds of reporting um, uh, platforms. Um, and uh, one of the goals was, you know, again, uh, not to be reliant on some kind of expensive uh, software library and um, to have uh, also the users be able to customize and create forms without expensive proprietary software um, expenses. So with th that in mind, um, uh, the solution was to go to something with a lot of flexibility. It's this HTML CSS based system, which basically can produce a CSV file of all the data that you would want to feed into um, your report, which may be, you know, loan forms, uh, labels, you know, what have you. And so uh, in that flexibility, you can use things like um, uh, this um, uh, mail merge, which is dependent on Microsoft Word. A lot of people have used that already in the past. And uh, I, I don't have a, a good set of documentation for that right now. So uh, that could be something that we, we showcase more in the future. But essentially, again, you can just take the CSV and um, have that um, added to any uh, Microsoft Word uh, um, document that you have um, that is ready to you know, accept these CSV variables. So there's a lot of potential there. And like I said, some um, collections are already using That's it. Okay. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. The um, yes. one that we wanted to talk uh, about uh, today, or at least demonstrate today, um, is the ones that are uh, based on um, uh, CSS. And so let me just share my screen. Uh, by the way, anybody, uh, who's on this call, feel free to just uh, say something or em raise your hand and Emily can call on you. I I'm gonna share my screen so I won't be able to see all of the um, hands, uh, so, or just shout it out. So um, let me log in here, sorry, I accidentally had logged out. Um, and, uh, oops, okay, I am logged in. Why aren't, why aren't we? Here we go. So under the new reporter system, you'll encounter this. This is the old legacy one. Our current uh, uh, reporter it, it is actually served on a separate um, server and it's still up, but it's a little bit creaky. So I suggest that if you're still using it to start thinking about the migration, this is definitely gonna happen um, this year. This is uh, one of our, um, NSF goals. So here's the existing reports. Um, actually, it would be useful for a show of hands. How many people have actually uh, cracked this page open? Yeah, you have? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. So a lot of you guys have actually seen this page. Um, but I'll kind of go through just an intro because I don't think that's everyone. Um, so here's our new one. Uh, this is again, a work in progress, but uh, we tried to make this as functional as possible. One of the things I first wanted to point out was this draft tutorial, which is actually uh, 
draft because um, it's a Google Doc and we're changing and updating this um, fairly often, uh, which is why it's still in this format. Eventually it will get migrated to the handbook. But meanwhile, um, you know, uh, uh, it breaks down kind of everything that I'm about to show you. So I just kind of wanted to let you guys know that this is kind of all written out here already. Uh, so you don't have to take uh, too many notes if you don't want to, or if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. But like I said, a lot of this stuff is already written up here. Um, this is the uh, table that uh, of all our existing reports. One of the things that is a little bit different from the past is we're trying to differentiate between uh, templates. So these in green boxes are templates um, that any user can uh, create a copy of and use as uh, the beginnings of their particular um, uh, report. Um, so we'll we'll go through a few of those. There's two that you know we, we can use as an example, um, and then the rest of these you can also see we have more description fields. So the description fields clearly say you know kind of like the status of them. They're a draft. This is for you know the Utopia area, you know. So there's a, a a bunch of these that are kind of in progress. There's a few loan documents here. Um, that uh, if we have some time, uh, we, we can also uh, use as an example um, and just kind of walk through these things. Um, and I think maybe when, uh, which, which one did I have first is our first example, um, Andy's. So I'm gonna open up Andy's template and um, I will describe the major sections and then maybe you could talk, Andy can talk us through. Uh, his thinking and, and rationale for this. So when you hit the edit button, you get this um, uh, page here. That's not mine. This is not yours. This is UAM. Why? Why did it's a template though? So I'm going to use it anyways. Okay. <laughs> here, just for so let's go just back. To be clear. Here. Uh, I see. This is yeah. Here's where's yours? Here's yours. There it is. Right yeah. down. Okay. Yeah. Because I remember you had a. Um, I changed the name. Yeah, let's just walk through one template just so that way you can see. So this one says template, but actually if you just click on this right here, um, then it becomes a template and uh, it's sort of available for everybody. And like I said, it gets kind of popped up to the top. Um, in the uh, Google Doc, I do explain all these different fields, but I'll just point out the important stuff right now. Um, you know, some kind of uh, helpful report name. We're not constrained. This is no longer a file per se. This is actually just a series of fields. So uh, you don't have to put underscores like we did in the old system. You could just put something, you know, useful. Um, you can see there's different kinds of um, uh, uh, report types, you know, dry label, wet label, loan documents, ledger documents, or if you just want to uh, plain CSV export. This is what you would choose if you're gonna use the uh, Microsoft Word option. Uh, you can also see, by the way, stuff gets highlighted over here. We have different kind of table names um, and uh, there's some sort of technical details on your choices here, but the Google Doc also tries to give you some um, more, a little bit of guidance. So like if you wanna print um, a label from search results, then you're, then use this variable. So this would be appropriate for dry or wet labels. If you wanted to print a loan form, then you're gonna want to use this uh, variable name, the transaction IDs. And this would be appropriate for, you know, invoices or loan forms. So uh, that's just to give you a little, you know, guidance there. This is not super um, uh, essential, but eventually you might want to um, delineate which collections that these are, um, primarily used for, um, but it, like it's not, it's not required. The first important chunk I wanna point out is this window, which by the way is um, adjustable. And this, so I'm gonna adjust it so I can see as much of this as possible. Um, and this uh, section is uh, called the report uh, CFM. And this is where it, it, it's actually, uh, has two components to it. The very first section is this 
part right here, and this is a SQL. So for majority of the users, you're just gonna um, have this copy pasted from something maybe that Dusty or Lamb will have passed on to you, or perhaps they have already set up your, your um, editing um, environment. And so it, it's already added in here. Uh, this is where it's useful to start with a template because it will also already have some of these SQL uh, commands added in here. So majority of the time, you don't need to worry about that part, but you should recognize that there is this top uh, section that's really important. Um, the second component of this uh, form is this bottom part. And um, in this particular one, I added this comment uh, because uh, this is the part that typically people are going to want to uh, edit. This is the uh, HTML section. So you can see that these HTML uh, section, if you're familiar with web development, you know, is um, it, it should look fairly familiar. And we also recognize that majority of curators is not something that, you know, they may have um, familiarity with. But these skills are actually quite uh, common uh, among, you know, if you're at a university student and your student population, maybe they're used to um, working on websites. Um, so if you can find a, a student, maybe even a computer science major um, who has familiar, familiarity with web development, these are the sort of skills that, that uh, would be quite easy to find. Um, the next section, uh, we'll get into more details um, in a second. So the next section though, this next big block, um, this is how you can uh, customize the look and feel of your, um, of your label. And this is uh, called the report CSS section. So this is purely CSS and CSS stands for cascading style sheets. This is what um, creates, uh, uh, or allows the HTML to have a particular uh, behavior or a particular uh, visual signature um, uh, against any of this code. So you could embed all of this information into your HTML, but that gets really long and awkward. And basically it also means that you might have to repeat it many times. Whereas here you can define these classes instead and so here you just you just refer to this specific class and the CSS will allow that particular look and feel to be repeated wherever that class is re referred to. So it's a lot um, more manageable in this hierarchical sort of uh, um, or arrangement. So um, we have uh, started using these particular classes over and over again. And let me just show you real fast here. So like I said, here's that section here that I described the HTML and the um, SQL. And under the CSS code block, you can see we've um, started um, delineating the kind of classes that are commonly used. Uh, they don't have to look like this. Yours doesn't have to look like this, but this is a good starting place for them, especially if you're gonna be using a template. And we may adjust them a little bit. Uh, I realized that I think um, some of our sort of short code names uh, may be harder for people to remember. So I might, I might make some adjustments, um, but we'll try to keep up. And this is something where, you know, at least the major um, editors right now, like Lamb and, you know, Andy or whoever else is gonna be doing a lot of stuff, we, we, could, we might wanna, um, check the coordinate this. So these will be uh, sort of the standard ones, um, hopefully moving forward. Um, and then you can kind of see where I've also listed um, not just uh, um, the classes, but you know whether or not they need to be included in your label or not. Um, so um, I think that's... Uh, enough for my intro. Oh, sorry, except for one other thing that's super important. <laughs> and that would be um, the variable names. So um, in the new um, system here, I think there's a whole section here, right here, where if you want, here we go. 
if you want to refer to a specific uh, SQL value, uh, let's just pick one right here. So catalog number, almost many of our labels will include a catalog number, right? Um, that catalog number is inserted into the HTML via these variables. And so what we've done here now is taking the SQL variable and um, added a pound on either side. And that basically is just saying, insert that value here in this spot. So you can see that there's um, some familiar looking field names here because these are coming straight out of the database. And um, I can have them inserted um, with these uh, pounds. So you just need to include include those, you know, um, uh, uh, hashtags or or pound si uh, signals on uh, both sides of the uh, the variable. So that's how we get from SQL to HTML, and then how we want it to look. We control with classes, and the classes are defined in the CSS. So I should probably make a, uh, a little flow chart of all this uh, <laughs> information, but um, I hope that that kind of presents some logic. And then now we'll go into an, um, some examples. Is Sorry, there any can questions? I, can I interrupt for? Oh, please. Yeah, questions. Answers. Yeah. Um, can you scroll to the top? Um, I wanted to emphasize a, a, a couple of points. Oh, sorry, um, slam talking. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah slam. Um, slam. So, okay. so you you see the um, fields up there, up here, uh, report name, used by, etc. Those are uh, not actually settings. They, those are more um, descriptive um, for displaying um, the report table um, and also for um, displaying what's available. So for example, when you select wet label, it doesn't automatically give you a template or set it to be a wet label. Mm. You have to define it in uh, the report CFM and the report CSS. And same same thing for accept variable. That That's just for display. Um, if you want it to accept a, a table name or a collection object ID, it has to be defined in your query or in the report CFM. Okay. Um, and then also in your report CFM, uh, you have your query there. Mm -hmm. So when you use your hashtag to to recall the fields, it has to be within the query. It has to be specified there. And I see you have some aliases, um, like the second one uh, as an aggregate function, and it it uh, is named as part count. Oh, uh, the part count, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, or uh, if you look at flat accession at the bottom there is just okay. space accession number. So the one you're looking for is anything that follow that is following the space or following as. Um, so if you wanted to get the flat dot accession field, you would recall it as hash access accession underscore number hash rather than accession. Right. But this is where I think for especially the initial migration, we just need to have that communicated to you or Dusty to help yes. with this particular yes. um, uh, uh, yeah. section. And, because um, once it's defined, then they can call it up here without kind of worrying about the actual SQL, which is, you know, a lot harder, I think, for people to just jump in and, and start yeah. doing yeah, Dusty and I can definitely help with writing the queries if you can spell out to us what you actually want. Um, and another thing I wanted to mention is um, we have a lot of uh, pre-developed functions that get a specific subset of data. So instead of writing this query, you would just call the function. And mm -hmm. again, Dusty and I can help with that um, yeah. if, if you tell us what, what you want. Um, we can say, oh, we already have a function for that. And that can just be, we can help you set that up within the, the query itself. Right. Um, and uh, lastly, for the CSS section, all of the CSS, uh, we have a separate section for it, but uh, it can actually also go in CFM. 
the CFM mm -hmm. section, um, but it um, it makes things a lot easier to kind of isolate it out and report CSS. Um, yeah, I, I I think we want to keep it separate. Yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because otherwise this gets super long and people forget the style tags. And right, all that stuff. right. But um, in in some templates or some other reports, if you look back at the um, the old um, reports, you might notice that there's actually some CSS some um, uh, formatting stuff in the CFM section. So oh, okay. um, if you see that, um, it's it's allowed. It's just uh, for this purpose. Um, it's a lot easier to manage in a separate section. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just a real quick about the um, uh, getting all this information to Dusty and Lamb to help. Uh, we do have a specific template, uh, issue template in the GitHub that tags, uh, I think, Lamb automatically um, when you uh, request help uh, migrating an old report to the new uh, system. Okay, so. Um, uh, Andy, would you like to walk us through the um, the DMNS tags and how you found it? And you, I'll let you talk about CodePen if you want, um, or or I could go. It doesn't matter. But I thought maybe people might be tired of listening to me talk. Sarah, <laughs> yeah, do you have a question? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, I just yeah. This is Aaron at uh, UAM. Hey. Um, like before. Michelle, before you do any of this, yeah, can you show us that you have to create a copy if someone uh, was going to edit one of these or wanted to use one a little differently? Yeah, right. Sorry that I, uh, yeah. So with the templates in particular, you can create a copy, but you could do that with actually any of them. You can see this button is available for all of them, and that's actually how I started uh, learning about the loan forms. I just created a copy of the uh, uh, Boulder loan form. So you just hit create copy, pre-fills in this, um, which you can edit up and then hit create and you'll have a brand new, oops, I need a, you need to uh, actually, yeah, I, I don't know if this actually makes a, a difference, but we'll just, I'll just pick one. Um, so I'll just throw this in here. And so now I've got a, a, an exact, clone exact copy of this um, uh, UCM report. You can still see it's got the same values here, um, which is actually kind of an interesting uh, example of how this has been, you know, this is hard coded in because, you know, there's only one collection, but you could turn that into a variable if you wanted to from the loan transaction. So, um, uh, yeah, I just wanted question? to make sure nobody just starts editing. So the UAM, ma'am label template yeah the the new thing that dusty made for me to use my word document for making labels i don't want anyone to just go in there and make it their own yeah but feel free to use it and make a copy if you want to change it or just use it as is because it's great yeah yeah, yeah, I mean, was... we, we we could change this around maybe so we've got some, uh, um, you know, a little extra nag screen on the edit button just so, just in case for accidental um, editing. That's something. That's a good idea. Yeah, that was that was my question: is what the the controls are for editing? <laughs> you know, is it uh, anybody can edit any label, or is it uh, operator control depending on who's logged in or what? Yeah, I think the templates uh, are limited as to who can edit. Is that right, Michelle? I can't remember. Um, but as far as the other reports, um, anybody can edit, but there's a warning saying, please check with owner before you edit. Um, and it... if that's not suitable, then we can talk to Dusty about limiting uh, edits for yeah, is there a way to maybe lock that or something mm -hmm. by whoever creates it, you know, so that it yeah, is we, protected? Yeah. We, some... we can, yeah, I think we can protect it. So um, is it, that what the protected it's... template dropdown does? It's either false or true. Yeah, it's well, 
I assume it, that it, that's how you kind of lock it, but yeah, we we yeah, can well. yes, we can we can make it so it's more explicit, and we can remove the edit button even. But yes, that's uh, the idea with that template flag, and I think right now it's just basically putting this green box around it and popping it to the top of the list. Um, which, by the way, I should mention the uh, for many of the tables in uh, Arctos, these are all sortable headers. So um, just to let you guys know, because uh, that came up earlier. So the default is this, though. Um, yeah, but those are good points. And uh, if somebody's taking some notes there, uh, I, will, I will make sure that's also added to the documentation about um, sharing and cloning. I mean, on an operational basis, most of the time you're going to encounter this from um, you know, your like drop down, right? So it's going to be here under, uh, um, uh, let's see, where's, where's reports download, Arctis Reporter. It's going to be here and you're, oh, I guess we do have an edit button. Okay, I take that back. I thought we didn't have an edit button there because I was going to say most of the time when you're when you're looking at this, you're going to be looking at this table because you're, you're ready to print something. And so you just want to open uh, one of the labels but maybe that's something that we, we want, might want to uh, revisit in terms of, you know, not having the edit button here and only under the reporter builder. Yeah, the, the open button shows up when um, you, it's a, when you're ready to run a report. If you're just going to the reports page, you only have edit and create a copy. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Like if we're under the reporter um that if we're if we've got some data to to run, maybe we don't want the edit button because you're you just want to print something. Well, the edit button, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but I think it's available there if you want to make some last minute changes for some hard coded name or something. I don't I don't know. Yeah, um, well, that's true. But yeah. then you could go here first. I, but I I appreciate that. I think the concern about having ed uh, edits, you know, accidental or otherwise. So, um, so that's something that, that we can tweak around, I think. Um, all right, so uh, any other questions or comments or good ideas? All right, um, so uh, uh, Andy, do you want to, um, Share your screen, or do you want me to drive? Uh, I can share the screen. Okay. Be quick. Uh, yeah, go ahead. All right, you see that? Yep. The results page. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I just took a stab at redoing our specimen tags, our, like our skin tags, or uh, each time on the summer skulls. Um, so just to show you what. The old ones look like if you go to the old reporter. Pull that up. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. Yeah, oh, yeah so these yeah, okay. general specimen tags, you guys are probably familiar with these. Um, it was a little tricky getting things to split up in the CSS, and I can't see my here we go. Uh, and then this is what I've been able to produce with the new um, reporter. Because we're still seeing that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a little tricky getting the columns and everything worked out. Um, but once I understood how the uh, wrappers work and the divisions uh, separate things, I think it's pretty simple. And you guys, people can copy and paste things like this. Um, if we look at the actual CMF, CSS here, um, I did about a bunch of like processing of the data um, in the SQL section uh, to get things how I want, like the coordinates, um, uh, this is elevation, to have the elevation show um, just a single value, or if it's a range of elevations, show both of those. Um, things like uh, rounding coordinates, um, 
I abbreviated some of our common collector names for organizations that we work with here um, so that we are saving as much space as we can on the labels. Did the same thing here. And there's probably better ways of doing some of this, but this is just how I could figure it out. I didn't want to display all of our parts. Um, I just kind of want the key ones to go on these labels. If we need to know everything, we'll go to Arctos. So I kind of, um, I just want to say skin if there's a skin or if there's uh, something in a whole organism in ethanol, I just want to say fluid prep. So that's what this section is. Um, yeah, I like that. We have our, our legacy accession um, codes, which is the majority of our collection for some of our collections. Um, I don't want to show that legacy code because that doesn't really mean anything. So I made those go away if those are what displays. Um, here, um, initially I made this for our just mammal tags, and then I decided I wanted to make it so I could just have one tag, and it didn't matter which collection, if it was birds or mammals or whatever. Um, so that's what this is doing. It's if the the GUID prefix is DMNS MAM. It pulls together these measurements and puts them in the format that I want. And then if it's bird, it pulls together these other measurements and puts them in the format that I want. Um, so I think creating labels that are functional across multiple co collections will be really useful. Um, it's a little trickier to get things to work out and fit in uh, initially, but it's going to be a lot easier going forward to just tell people just just print the tag labels. It doesn't matter. And you can then you can search across collections and still print the same, you, you get everything. So um, then we get down into the actual um, HTML section here, pretty basic compared to what's in all the other forms. Um, in the CSS section, um, one thing I had a lot of like, a lot of fields where there's more text than will fit on the label. So I've added, um, where is it? You can add an ellipsis at the end where it cuts off. Um, here, uh, text overflow ellipsis or overflow hidden. So that cuts it off. So it doesn't just print off past your label. And then this text overflow ellipsis will add an ellipsis there. So you know that there's more information in the database. That's not on your label. Um, so if we look back at this one, these, um, you can see some of that in action, like the uh, reproductive condition here. There's more information, but that just trails off. Um, I'll figure out something else to do with that, maybe to make those more concise. Um, you can see the parts all come in as just those simple values. I put in some searches for any of our, we separate our tissues out into like heart or heart and kidney and muscle. So uh, the search is looking for any of those tissue things and it just puts in a single tissue if we have any tissues in our freezer. So um, you can see, here's one of my problems that I haven't fixed yet um, for the, uh, Taxonomy, here we've got a really long name. This is a string for hybrids. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to truncate that down. Um, if it was just a you know single a species with maybe a subspecies name and they're really long words, that's gonna cause problems. So it's something I haven't quite figured out yet. Um, I'd rather not just ellipsis that off, but I don't know if you could dynamically control the, the font size or anything to deal with that. Um, and then, so once this is ready, I go, I want to print these, um, I save it as a PDF. And for some reason, the preview always takes a long time. Uh, one thing I'll note, there's this background, do you see this pop up here? Yeah. Uh, there's this background graphics checkbox here. And um, I discovered that my little dots here for where I put the holes for the string to go through, that's a background graphic, however I put it in there. So I had to make sure that was checked so it comes up on the preview or comes up on the PDF. 
what's your what's your margin it just says default do you have did you um i think i specify? oh i see it, it actually shows up just fine okay yeah where did that go Can you still see that, the PDF? Mm -hmm. So then the, my final problem um, is down at the bottom of the page. It doesn't handle the page breaks correctly. So it's printing the label on too. So that's something I'll need help with figuring out. And I think Michelle and I were talking earlier, there's this page JS function, um, which yeah, I think I will help you set that up. Yeah, I can go through that in the next demo. So I don't, does anybody have any questions? I have a quick that? question. Yeah. Uh, your symbols for male and female. Oh. And I, I, yeah. So that was the biggest improvement over Cold Fusion. You could not do that with the Cold Fusion Adobe, or at least I could not figure it out. Um, but here's. Um, yeah, I just typed in the HTML. Um, oh, you just add, okay. In here, and actually, the first time you type it in, um, yeah. The first time you type it in, you know, it's like a four-digit character, a four-character mm -hmm. word, but then it shows up here as the symbol. Um, the tricky right. part about that, the the default font for most of these things, or the fonts for all of them, are a really um, crappy version of those symbols. It's very uh, thin. So I, I searched through font after font and uh, finally determined that uh, this was the one that gave the best um, appearance, the Lucida console. Um, there are a couple others that were close, but that was incredibly annoying. We could, add, I mean, I'm just wondering, we could just add those in as like, you know, icons that are available on Park does too, but good workaround, good solution. Any questions for Andy besides uh, icon and, stuff? And Andy, then, I noticed some of your uh, skin labels didn't have any preparations. Is that that was just blank, or it would say skin or skeleton or whatever? What's those are that? probably still in our freezer and have not been prepared. I didn't. Uh, Okay. I didn't make a code for still whole. But you still, okay. Code. Okay. Just curious about that. Yeah, that would go in this section. I would just add another line, like the case when it's a whole organism, display this. Uh huh. Um. Okay, um, can we, uh, I, I'll, I'll just move on a little bit and uh, shout out if there's more uh, questions. Uh, I'll just give another quick demo here of, um, so Andy, I should also mention, also has in his description, this link to CodePen, which he didn't go over, but uh, I have it open here. And uh, whoops, this is not Andy's, this is Andy's. Uh, so th this is exactly the label you just saw him demonstrate, but this is what it looks like if you were to copy in the HTML and the CSS into this, um, into this uh, web browser. This uh, website code pen allows you to dynamically see um, changes to HTML and CSS. And I'll give a little demo for that in a second. So I'm just gonna go through a little bit of our, uh, one of our labels because it's a um, uh, something that we've been working on. It's not done actually, but um, it's a little bit different than our the first label I worked on because it has to be a very specific size dimension. And so what I have been, uh, learning um, is this uh, um, suite of uh, libraries uh, from this project called PageJS. It's paged 
JavaScript. And basically, it's a uh, uh, suite of libraries that helps create um, books. So you can you can look at all their examples here. So you know you can it helps you do these page layouts for these books and you know. Uh, but the why we're using it is because it lets you uh, very explicitly um, contain the contents in uh, these well-defined boxes. And um, they have a little quick, you know, how PageJS works uh, documentation. So, I mean, I'm not suggesting every curator go around and start becoming web developer developers, but this is where you want to point um, perhaps uh, a a student or an employee who's uh, helping you design a new label, for instance. Um, and so I'm just showing you where I learned uh, how to do a little bit of what we're doing right now. I, um, I read this stuff up and, and played around with it. So um, you can call that with this little tag here uh, at the beginning, uh, which actually I think is also listed yeah, right down here. So this is stuff that, um, you know, I, I, I didn't magic this information. It's just scattered here and there, but I'm trying to get it all together in one spot now. And um, when you do that, then now you have access, it's gonna call this suite of libraries for you. And and actually there already exists there. There's a couple of things that are default uh, um, in Arctos. It just assumes that you're using, you know, your, your, your page size is going to be eight and a half by 11, sort of like your standard page. But what you can do, um, so this is your eight and a half by 11 page. And then you can see, can everyone see these little boxes here? These, there are these additional um, uh, separations co uh, containers that you can also define the size for. And your actual working text will fit into this last section right here. Each one of these sections are defined in HTML through what they call divs. So div, you'll see these tags everywhere. And that, that's the class that we normally are spending all of our attention on. But um, you can define the exact dimensions of these divs through, um, through these uh, calls right here. I mean, and that's what I just did right here. So I have, you know, the margin, top margin, I want at uh, 0.2 and the right and the bottom margin, the left margin. So it's basically all the same. There's actually a way to do this in one line, but I wanted it to be really explicit. So I decided to keep it all in the, the longer, more verbose way. Um, but you can see that you can actually either use um, uh, specific dimensions like inches, or you can use uh, millimeters. You know, you don't have, other examples on the website might be in, uh, pixels or percentages. And obviously, if you really want to nail down the size of your, your box, then you're, you're going to want to do um, something of a specific unit. Um, so I've been trying to uh, comment out as much of my CSS code um, as possible, mostly so my students who are starting to learn how to do this um, uh, have these reminders, but, um, you know, there's a couple of things that we've discovered, like, you know, uh, we didn't want certain, uh, font families, or we do want certain font families. There's all sorts of things that kind of like get, you know, uh, um, adjusted and it just really depends on what your particular, um, institution wants to see. So in terms of seeing this, um, let's kind of go back here. So what, um, I've done here is, oops, here, let's just uh, actually minimize this part because uh, we're not editing any JavaScript. Um, so what we're, what we're seeing here is um, literally just a copy paste of only the HTML section from my reporter. And then this is a copy paste of the CSS from uh, that same Arctos report. So you can see now, um, you know, that this initial setup of the pages uh, of the rather the um, box um, and um, everything here is controlled um, here. So I can kind of visualize immediately what I want to see. So for instance, if this was going to be uh, 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 um, a different institution, you know, I, I don't even know what, museum of, you know, 
they're they're not an Arctis, but they're at UC Berkeley. So, <laughs> um, you know, you can see that it it updates as fast as I, I can type it. And right now, there's a little lag. I know this looks so wrong, Carla. Just don't ignore it. Uh, <laughs> but um, but you can see it's it's pretty uh, responsive. Like immediately, I I type in something and it's gonna update right there. Um, so you can see parts that are hard coded, the MVZ part, because that's not going to change for us. Um, and then parts of it are variable. So again, those hashtags right there. So I'm keeping it as a variable here. So this is just all sorts of. Yeah. Keith, does that answer your question about JavaScript? What was the question? Yes, it, yes, it does. I was just wondering where the JavaScript fit in. Although I saw some examples on the reporter where the JavaScript was looked like it was in a third window on um, on the um... for the most part the JavaScript is going to be like behind the scenes here in Arctis, right? Uh, so uh, if there's any kind of functions and other you know stuff, um, you we we can. It, there were, it, that that can just be requested Dusty to make adjustments on the back end and yeah. they'll be available to everybody. And then he will hopefully update this sidebar here uh, and tell you how to call in those um, special functions. Okay, yeah, I guess what I just, I saw that there were a couple examples in CodePen where the there was a third window. Um, oh, right, with yes. With JavaScript in there. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you can, you can, th that's what CodePen is really great about. You can see how these three parts of um, a web page can uh, interact with each other. And that's what th this is for. Um, so uh, I just minimized it because I'm not using it right now. So that's all. But yes, you, you can have a third window here. And so actually, if you go into my uh, CodePen, I started this little collection here for just Arctos reports. Um, and so this is another way to kind of like, just pre, it helps you preview what um, what it might look like. So here's an example of, um, of one, but this one doesn't have, uh, this one's pretty fluid because we have, we make different size uh, uh, jar labels for this one. Um, so Michelle, um, yeah. on the one that you were showing before, how do you adjust the I mean, the vertical spacings off? So how do you adjust that? Right, you don't want the parts that, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, too. this is what um, uh, um, my students been working on, um, but there are there's basically more than one way of adjusting that. So, for instance, um, we can. Uh, what we've discovered is uh, this line here is. It's for the geography, so it's you know county, state, uh, or, or rather state, county, uh, specific locality. That can be up to three, um, three lines long. So mm -hmm. that just kind of wraps. Right now, this current one just kind of wraps around, and all this stuff get does get shoved down at the bottom. So, but we want to control how many lines, and maybe I'll do an ellipse like what. Um, what uh, uh, Andy's uh, has as a solution, but you know we do have some localities that actually are four lines long, but I don't want it to go longer than three lines. So you know, there's all these. We haven't really figured out what's our best way of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, you, I actually for one of the other labels, I do have this function called gap, a class called gap, and basically it it puts in a big space. And um, one of the collections wanted that space because they hand write in some value. So, um, so you can do that. Um, and let's see, this, this CSS does not have gap in here. So can you fix it so that the, say the parts is, is aligned down at the bottom, you know, regardless yes, of what's above? Or, told, yes, Carla, it's that that's on the list. Yes. No, it's, I'm just, this, this example no. is just not showing it because I haven't gotten around to it, but yes, okay. that is definitely on that. Let's just see if we can find it. I don't think I don't think uh, Ji Yoon has even uh, had time to work on it. Uh, let's see, okay. where's hers? So, so it's here's, not. Uh -huh. Yeah. So th this is all fixable. I mean, for yeah. hers, I think you know she ended up obviously over overcompensating here a little bit because of this locality issue that we've had. Uh, we've had. But let's just take a look at how she fixed this, or how she thought she was going to address this. Um, 
so the first couple of classes, you know, this wrapper and sell, we basically don't, um, uh, we don't mess around with it too much. Um, except the, uh, once we have it, once we determine the overall size, we will put this specific size right here in the cell. Okay, so that's what we've done here. Then we have uh, two classes uh, that we use occasionally. They're called three column and two column. And that just refers to, do we want a div that includes three sections like uh, this one here? This actually has uh, is three columns, or do we want it as two columns, which is uh, like this example right here. So those are just used. And uh, like I said, we we just uh, copy paste this one. We, we've said it once, we're not gonna mess around with it too much. Uh, this is for the catalog number. This just kind of tells us, you know, what the weight is, the font, you can be, you can specify the specific size, um, the font size. So that really helps also with spacing. Um, Scientific name, the IDs, loca uh, localities. Um, she, yeah, so she started playing around with this, uh, where she has the localities um, class um, set for a specific line height. But I don't think this is the way to go when we have um, too many, when we have a lot of lines of uh, locality. Um, so we haven't quite figured that out. But that's mm -hmm. that's why in her particular case. Um, it still doesn't look right until you actually print it out. So we can look at that in a second. Um, some of these are not being used. She's not using quads or cords. So that, uh, but again, you can just ignore those if you're not. Um, yeah, she started trying to figure out a bottom, uh, which is now an ID. It's not a, a class, uh, which I don't think she actually has implemented yet. So, oh no, actually I take that back. She did implement this, this bottom. So this is where she was trying to constrain it. So there's a there's a bottom identified, and that's where only this uh, only these elements uh, are in. And so you can see that this bottom section uh, includes both this two column uh, line as well as the centered parts. Um, and again, parts, you can see how parts is uh, defined in its font size of seven point fonts. It's always text aligned to the center of the section um, and it's a fixed position. So uh, this is just the rough preview. I mean, really you gotta have to, you gotta print this um, to check it out, but you can, fortunately do this uh without too much like you know like you don't have to waste paper doing it <laughs> so um let's just see what that one looks like here um, does anybody have any questions while i do a, a test printout here i have a question mm -hmm. so i just found a field that i would like to have on the label that doesn't appear in the um, flat table. Mm. Um, can I add a join um, to the SQL to whatever other table in Arctos that has that field that I'm interested in adding? Um, or do I have to request it to be added to the flat? Well, um, you certainly can do it if you know what you're doing. There's no. nothing that's, it, the, the request for help is just that, just a request. If you don't need help, you can, yes, you, you may. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, what's fun about this is pretty dynamic. So you can, you can play around with this. You could break stuff on your own, of course. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's a good way to learn what you're doing. Um, mm. I started helping out um, uh, uh, Alabama. This is, this is the thing I drafted up for them. And this didn't take me very long at all, but it was kind of fun because they add this little logo thing. So I was able to like, just have that to play around with. Um, so, uh, um, and I definitely was using a lot of fields that I don't normally deal with cause it's an invertebrate collection. So, um, and you know, some of it, I, I just, uh, copied directly from the old reporter. Um, but, um, yeah, it's it, like I said, just, a, you could, you can do a lot of, um, testing. How, so how do how do how do fields get selected for the flat for the flat table? I mean that's I guess the question. Um, is well, is that an intermediate step in 
exporting to data aggregators? Um, yeah, so flat is our way of making sure uh, a lot of functions in Arctos um, are pretty fast. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you're doing a big, um, when you're doing a search on the main search page, for instance, uh, you're hitting flat right there. Okay. And uh, so it's, it's kind of reused in a lot of places. I don't even know all the places it's reused, to be honest, but um, but it's sort of like the go to place. Now, um, actually, I just uh, remembered there is a let's go back to do I have one of these are already open? No, I don't. So let's just let, let's just uh, let me just show you one way of um, finding out what's in flat. Um, I think there's. I, I, was a, I was browsing the table under developer tools, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good way. But I think that, oh, right here. So there's a, I knew there was like a little cheat sheet here. So there is a little um, business here. So if mm. you just copied uh, this little section that I just highlighted. Mm -hmm. um, and you make go sure to, you have the where clause. Uh, yeah. Um, so if you just copy this, mm -hmm. um, and you can get it as a CSV too, actually, I think it's this, then, you know, then there's this fast way of <clears throat> okay. seeing everything, uh, all the fields in flat and what, um, it's not going to change too much, but I think, uh, in the next, maybe it's already done it, where there's an issue lately, uh, we're making a couple of last minute additions to flat mm. or i don't think we're taking anything out of flat or just a few extra additions to flat and it's going to kind of like lock in flat for a while because i think it's going to have like an enormous amount of um of uh, uh of what we need mm -hmm. and um that should serve us for you know a lot of our search and query functions and and for things like this uh, I just noticed that it, it, it includes age class instead of age and our age data for birds are in age rather than age class. So, but that's no, it, it does include age because we use age as well. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure oh. it has yeah. age in it. it. Yeah, it has age because because that's what we use. On the, that's weird. On the table browser, it wasn't showing me age, Oops. but anyway, well, if it's there, it's there. It's fine. Okay. Well, if it's not there, um, then we should we should know about it. Maybe yeah. actually, maybe it would be useful to have a more uh, a, um, a um, you know a regular. Uh, sorry, um, it, uh, it it may be that the flat. summary the summary that's on Arctos. So I mean, I went to manage Arctos developer tools, and then I went to table browser, and then I navigated to flat, and then I searched for age. And all I find is age class, not age. But maybe that needs updating or something. Um, yeah, it says it was re refreshed in 2021. So okay, yeah, maybe we need a ref we need that have we need that changed around. Okay, well, uh, it yeah. looks like it's clearly more reliable to just query out the column headers, <laughs> like you did. Uh -huh. It doesn't yeah. look like it's in flat currently. Um, Oh, you guys must yeah. try a table to well, get it, uh, yeah, file yeah. an issue because yeah, <laughs> yeah. we we that we use age as well, so we definitely want age. Okay, well, I'm um there there is an issue open right now, so I'm just gonna but um so age class a sorry age to age. flat mm -hmm. yeah it's just plain yeah, old age. just okay. plain old age yeah and, and um oh, go ahead yeah sorry any other questions comments. Um, we're at time, but thank you so much, Michelle, for this drive through and Andy. Um, and, you know, I know some for some of us, this is a little overwhelming. So if you don't know where to start, you can always kind of plug your data into other people's templates and see what's missing and then um, file that file a report um, or just yeah, I, if you have an existing template that you just want migrated. Just go ahead and, and put in an issue. Um, you don't. Yeah. Know. And just uh, and feel free to. Um, File an issue uh, and specifically um, tagging, you know, uh, uh, me or Dusty or Lamb or Andy, people who've like wor worked through the process a little bit because it, I swear to God, it will uh, get easier. <laughs> um, I also will just 
quickly just show like a real fast um this we do have it this new uh um issue template here so you can request um the dis this is for both like migrating new stuff but also having a brand new template so you can also just like append this with new if that's what you want to do but you know um getting the right people uh on uh to to take a look at this you know i i see i have lamb already but i can also tag dusty on these um but you know this is one uh surefire way of getting our attention to um and uh like I said, this is a priority for this year, so we're we're going to be um, working hard on trying to make these um, making this change. I think the next uh, uh, demo we'll do will um, revolve around the Microsoft Word mail merge. So maybe I'll hit up Aaron for some um, tips on how he's managing it. And there's a couple of other people I know who use it on a regular basis. So um, I we were also thinking about ways we can share those um, Microsoft templates um, and CSVs. So we'll have like a kind of a, a workflow for that as well. Sounds good. Yeah, well, thanks for your patience and enthusiasm. Any other questions though, or comments? Yeah, thanks. Thanks guys. Thanks, this is all becoming much more clear very quickly. Oh, good. <laughs> that that warms my heart. Thanks for saying that, Keith. <laughs> all right. See y'all. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Bye.